Um, okay, so let's start with the with the warm up and um, uh, grab the racket, please. And let's just start moving the racket uh, ab above our heads. So kind of like a little, little twist on both sides. So just stretching the side first. And you can go with your breath if you like. So you go, breathe in. And breathe out when you twist. And then let's continue with this, but then go all the way down. So obviously you have to turn the body to and, and soften your knees a little bit in order to get that racket close to the next uh, to your foot and then bring it up close to your body above your head to the other side. And again, here it's important that you feel what is the angle in your upper body that you gives you that little bit of hip stretch, a little bit of hamstring. And then when you're up here, you can do that side stretch still. So you try to find those, those marks and those angles to make it work. So for some people, it might be that when you do this, you like to do it with extended straight legs and really make it a hamstring stretch. And some like to go really soft bending knees and twist the body more and get more like outer hip or let's say even the lower back stretch out of it. So this is really up to you. Just try to make it work for you as, as well as possible. Okay, let's go back on top of the head and start doing small rotations above the head. So only the shoulders, only the arms are moving. And then the other direction, just a little shoulder warm up. And try to keep your arms quite extended to get that move, hit your shoulders. Good, okay. And then let's go back to the first direction and then add upper body movement. If your, if your spine doesn't like this, then make it smaller and use only your arms. But if, if it feels okay, make it bigger. And then switch one more time the direction. A lot of twisting and turning. Okay. All right, let's shake it off. So let's go. Good morning. Arms above your head. Hold the racket. And then slowly bring your racket with straight arms all the way down. And breathe out. And up again, breathe in. Hang loose for a couple of seconds. Let your head hang heavy. And breathe in. And out. One more time. Okay. Good. Okay, let's go a little bit more twisting the, the mid body. And uh, we're gonna do this in a, in a light lunge position. So take a step forward with your right foot. And it's not a deep or long lunge, it's just a, a, a longer step. And your upper body is still kind of straight up like this. It looks like this from the side. It's not too heavy. So kind of mid balance, you're not leaning too much forward or backwards. And then from here, Start rotating the body. So bringing that racket from one side to another. Good. And then let's stay with this foot. Go a little bit further, make that lunge longer. So from here, go to here and then lean forward. So now your weight is pretty much 80, 90% on the front foot. And now bring that racket from one side of the foot to the other side. And the lower you can bring the racket, the better the stretch or the, the more heavy the stretch is. 
So it's really the glute, hamstring, and the lower back that we kind of want to open up here. One more time. Outside and inside. Okay, come up, shake that right leg, and let's do the same with the left one. So now the bit milder lunge, upper body straight up, and then bring the racket from left to right. And then we go down. So move that front foot, the, the foot or the longer forward, and then lean forward. So bring your upper body nice and low. So really working on that, that uh, quad muscle and hamstrings. And then bring the racket from the outside to the inside. So ideally the racket is in a parallel line with your foot. First outside, then inside. Great balancing exercise as well, as you're not touching anything while you move from side to side. It really works well for your core as well. Last one. And slowly come up, shake your legs a little bit. Let's see if I can improve your, your audio a little bit. Okay, so now uh, one more little exercise for, for warming up with the racket. And um, so the chair is not coming into the picture. Sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna start with the backhand and we're gonna do three shots with stepping in each, with each one of them. So the movement with the feet, feet is always step in, hit the ball, come back, step in, hit the ball, come back. Uh, so we always go from lob, to rail, to volley. So this is the order. So you go low paced or medium paced, you step in, you go, sorry, I have to start with the lob. So low backswing, lob, rail, volley. And back to start. Under the ball, lob, bigger swing, rail, and then the volley, the upper body stays more tight, more straight up. Lift with the lob, rail to the back, Volley to finish. Lob, rail, volley. One more round. Down to lob, middle to rail, high to volley. Okay, let's continue with this same pace, but now it's the other leg. So now the forehand side, or if you started with forehand, you switch to backhand. And you step in, so you go lob, rail, and high position for volley. So first one racket is on the knee height. Second one, it's about a hip high. Third one is about a shoulder high. So knee high and hip high, shoulder. And when you go to lob, you obviously you lunge more. So your body is lower. And two more rounds, lob up. Big swing for rail, volley in the middle. Last round, lob up. Big swing for rail and the volley. Good. Okay. Oof. All right. It's already good. Good time to have the first sips if you haven't been drinking before. You always should be tanking before the real work starts. Okay. Let's look into the footwork and what we're going to do first. Actually, you don't, well, you, this is good to have a marker. Okay, let's put, put the marker in the middle. It can be the water bottle or whatever you like. Um, I'm going to use it now just to divide or kind of like guide me to move correctly. So I'm having open stance with both shots. So I'm stepping in with right and hitting my rail. Then I come back and I prepare my backswing and I do open stance on my backhand. So I have this 90 degree angle in my movement. So one goes with forehand straight, coming back, and it's, it's just a shuffle in the middle. So coming back, then left one, and rail again. So one shot goes that way, the other one goes that way, okay? 
So 90 degree angle, stepping, stepping in, footwork. And here what we try to create is that rhythm. So what I do is I always kind of like feel like it's, it's, a, it's a dancing move. So you go ta, 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 ta. One, two, shot, one, two, shot, one, two, shot. One, two, shot. What's nice about this angle is that end of your back swing on your backhand is the start of the forehand swing. And same with the end of the forehand swing. It stays up to prepare your backhand. All right. And three more times. Two more times. Good, okay, so now let's, what kind of like what, how you can test your footwork and your rhythm is that you wanna go a little bit faster. So if, you're, if, you're, if you're, your, your footwork is light enough, it's, it's kind of like easily adapting to any kind of ball that has been hit. And if your footwork is struggling a little bit, and we all know, for example, if you get tired, you're a little bit low, you know, you're a bit static on the ground. You don't get that rhythm. And because of that, you often get less balance, uh, less good of the timing. So let's try this a little bit faster. And it's not that you have to go with my pace. You can go faster or slower, but it should be a little bit faster than you did. So don't go full speed, but I would say it is very high medium pace. So let's say low, high pace, whatever that means. That sounds pretty weird. <laughs> so we're gonna go 45 seconds, and this is gonna be my pace. So I go ta pa 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 ta 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 ta. 45 seconds. Everybody go. And keep that racket up. Your swing ends up on one side, so it's always the start of the swing on the other side. Try to move in 90 degree angle. So your upper body turns when you get back to the tee. Ta, 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 shuffle, ta, shuffle, ta, shuffle, ta. And if you go low with these, it becomes physically very demanding. Obviously, the lower you go, the harder it gets. Okay, last 10 seconds. And time, good. Okay, so now we're gonna go the other way. So now I'm gonna do my left foot forward towards the camera. So I'm playing my backhand there and then coming up here with my forehand. Make sure you have your chair out of the way. So coming in, so 90 degrees again. So we are doing the same but the moving angle is just different. You go the other way. So 45 seconds, go. And we can go a little bit faster right away. So don't, if you find the rhythm, try to keep it like up pace or up tempo. And if you have issues with space, keep the racket, hold the racket high up. So make it short so it doesn't, hit the things like the walls or the lights or things like that. And time, okay. Let's continue with this open stance uh, theme, which is very common way of movement in squats nowadays. I mean, it was back in the day as well. But I guess the, the, it took a while for the coaches to kind of <laughs> embrace it and, and understand it perhaps as well. So like we've been talking about the open stance a little bit. So uh, the advantage is very often, especially on the forehand side, you, you have that quickness. You're straight at the ball. And the big disadvantage is that when you're hitting harder, with an open stance, or even not harder, but just not being always balanced enough or strong enough in the body positioning. When you swing, you start to open up. And that's when you're kind of like having that 
<laughs> wider range. It's like playing golf and, you know, having a huge slice or hook or whatever. The ball is in the middle of the court. Um, so the important thing here is that when you start shuffling and turning, really work on that midsection. Work with your core to keep that body tight. So when you turn and you hold it, you can swing and the ball will go straight or cross court, wherever you want to hit it, but you're not uh, out of balance. And same on the backhand. Backhand is more difficult because you have that, that cross body position. So this is more demanding than this. You can see the difference that this is kind of easier to balance. And here, when I'm going to the backhand, it's very easy to lose balance. Okay, so we work on the, the core and the theme was the light footwork. So now the, the distance between the goals, left and right, is very short. So it's not about big lunges, but it's really about the lightness in the middle, the good rotation of the upper, upper body, holding the, the pose while swinging, and then the lightness in the middle, and then again. So you're kind of like almost in the mid area and just uh, shuffling from one side to another. Okay. Let's do one medium pace round first. Ready? Go. Turning. Ta, 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 ta. One, two, ta. One, two, ta. Footwork is light in the middle. Ta. And to keep that upper body nice and tight, take time to swing. So you're not coming up when you swing, okay? So you're going down with your body weight when your racket goes down. That's part of the power and part of the control. So you need to take a little bit more time just to finish that shot. Good. Okay, last two. And a small, short break. If you have the space, move those targets a foot or so each further from another so you create more distance. So ideally, if you have more space, please go and uh, make a 10, 12 feet distance between the targets so you can have a stronger lunge. Uh, so then you come closer to how this works in, uh, in the game situation. So it's often the wrong foot movement is uh, quick movement from the tee, ball that is about to pass you, that is a, a, a harder drive that is a little bit short. So you don't always get that ideal position to bring that right foot on the on this side, the front foot forward, or the left foot on this side. So you just go straight to the ball. Um, so, so ideally, you do this with more distance. I'm having it a bit shorter now, so that's, that's up to you and within your, your space that you're having at the moment. But a little bit more at least. So we, we're going to do one more round, a bit more intense and low. So keep your upper body as slow as you can, so you're pretty much scraping the floor with the racket on both sides okay we're gonna go one full minute ready go so low ta -ta, low ta -ta. work on the balance so this is a lot of core i already feel it that if i'm not concentrating on my balance i'm really hitting the ball all over the place so i have to work on the glute a lot and my core just to get that right body position there we go. That's the body position. Balance first. Hit that shot. The, there's a good saying about this. Uh, taking time creates time. So when you focus on hitting that ball with enough time and not rushing through it, it will be more accurate. And because of that, it will create more time. Last 10 seconds, guys. Come on, stay low. Keep going. And there we go. Good job. Okay, let's have some water and then move into the back corners. Okay, so I'm gonna place the water bottle. Let's see, you can see it there. Okay, so the water paddle is my T point. The distance is a bit short, but it'll do for, for now. And my target shot is about here. So this is my backhand back corner. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around uh, just like I would in a, in a real life, which means I'm coming from the T. So I have the preference. So I go straight. I shuffle in. I get my racket already. Uh, keep distance to get under the ball. So if I go straight in there, I'm a bit crowded. So I don't really get a good position to lift the ball up if I need to do so. So I need a little bit more distance. Stepping in. So everything is slow. But it's now the traditional foot taking the step. And then getting under the ball. Playing a rail. Pushing back. This is obviously the, the rule, giving space, and then moving forward to the tee. And while moving forward, make, get your body turning already. And then you see the corner, shuffle, shot. Keep looking at your own ball, and back, shuffle, and shot. Okay, we're gonna go one full minute from the tee. So shuffle, step in, forwards, back, look at the ball. Shuffle, step in. And here as well, when you're in the back corner, I know you want to get early and quick back to the tee, but you have to finish the shot first. So when you take time and have the confidence in the back to hit that good rail and not hurry and rush it, it will be more accurate. It will be tighter. It will be deeper. So take your time to finish that shot, okay? Okay, here we go. Ta -ta -ta. Finish the shot. Back to the tee. Look at the ball. Look at the target. There we go. Shuffle. Step in. Back to the tee. And again, we talk about, talked about the light footwork. On the toes. Everything is toe work except the heel. When the heel hits the ground, when you hit the ball. Okay. Last two. And the last one. Good. Okay, let's move to the other side. So I'm just moving my T point way to the left. So that creates my space for my forehand. And we're gonna go for one minute, same here. So when you start off from the T, let the racket uh, early in early stage with the first two steps with your shuffle to lead your way. So very often I see people focusing on the ball and then at the end they lift the racket up. And it gives you very uncomfortable timing and less options. So why don't you just start with the racket? And then while you go, if you see the ball lower, you bring it lower. If you see the ball, let's say, hitting the back wall or side wall coming off, you go, oh, that's easy. So you, you build it up. But you have a good starting position already. Okay, so the racket is there, stepping in, balance, give space, forward and back. One minute. And go. Step in, forward. And remember that there is no ball physically now, but you do look at the ball. So make sure your eyes are working here. You have your gaze on the ball. Nice target. And that gives you way sharper timing for your footwork, which works for your balance. Uh, and accuracy all together. So looking at the ball, all right? Keep going, we got about 20 seconds to go. And there we go. And when you leave the tee point, racket ready, ice on the ball. And last two shots, good rail, nice balance. And stepping, all right. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna do the back corners, both. So now my T point is in the middle, where it normally should be. And I'm gonna bring the target really far to the back. So actually for me, it might even work for my, my brain, now that I'm seeing that the, the wall, so this would be the back wall for me. Obviously it's a, in real life, it's a side wall, but it would be the back wall. So what I need to do when I leave the tee is to get my position really early, low, low, and behind the ball so I can still be before the back wall, still get that racket behind. So it's a very labored physical movement. But if you can do it, even if you get a little bit closer to the ball, but if you can get into that low position and drop your racket, 
uh, and that way you're able to lift the ball up, it'll give you time to get out of the corner. So same on the other side. And this is now up to you. You can either alternate with the right, right foot or left foot. So for me, in, in, in real game situation, I would pretty much always go with my right foot into the forehand, my right back corner, because it gives me the, the quickest and best reads and quickest access to into the corner. And my balance is good. When I go to the other side, I rarely go with left. So I don't feel the benefit with left here because I feel like my upper body is in an awkward rotational position. So I feel like I get more out of my body movement if I go here also with the right. But that means that every difficult position I would use the same foot, which actually is true. So it's very often the, the, the more labored movements, I would say I use 80 to 90% right foot. Uh, but now it's an exercise, so you can uh, alternate, use both, see what works for you as long as you're low and balanced while you get under the ball. So we are in under pressure position, so you have to put pace on it and you have to lunge into the corner. Okay, one minute, ready, go. So low, T point, low, T point, lunge and hit the ball up, come on. So this is really something you can work on your core muscles here. Really work on being balanced. So every muscle of the body works here. It's a low lunge. So your lower back is working a lot, especially when you, it lifts you up back up again. Because of the swing, you need a lot of core muscles to keep your upper body nice and nice and tight and the legs are keeping you going so that's the foundation for everything and we got two more to go last one all right good okay let's move straight to the front corner pickup so t-point is now way at the back i have a little bit space behind it and I'm gonna go into my backhand and forehand front corner in turns with a big lunge. So one minute long, as huge lunge as you dare to make, depending on your situation at home or outside, just may keep it safe. But I want you to make more lunge than this, okay? I want you to reach out and make yourself really, really long. So we're gonna go backhand lift, T point. Forehand lift, T point. One minute, go. Up and T. Lift and T. Make sure also here you're looking at that ball and you're hitting it really high on the front wall. Lift it up, come on. Ah, your opponent is 10 feet behind you, close to the T. So the ball has to be 20 feet high at that area. Keep going, come on, we've got 30 seconds. Remember when you lift the ball up, when you're going to the front corners late, you don't need or can use a backswing. So you go more and more straight in order to wanting to hit the ball up. Okay, up, shuffle, up, shuffle. We got 10 seconds, guys, come on. Let's do five big ones, one, two, Three, four, and five. Good. All right. Good job. Woo. Okay. So these are good things to do. Uh, let's say if you do any other kind of home workout, uh, whether it's yoga or stretching or some, some other more physical stuff, Try to add this. I mean, little footwork, step in, swing with your racket. It works well as a cooling down. It works well as a warm up. Uh, if you make it more intense, it'll work as a workout, <laughs> as a more physical. But it's good to keep your, your brain and body kind of connected to, hey, there's the ball, this is the timing. That you don't get back on court in a couple of weeks and you go like, oh, I can't see anything. So we try to 
try to be ready as possible. Okay, so for the circuit training, we have a couple of things, at least one thing out of my head that we are on our knees. So if you don't, if you have knee things, knee issues like I do, uh, have a towel, something to put underneath or yoga mat that works great. Uh, for this one, we don't need much. It's just body weight stuff, like always, and uh, we don't need that much, much space. So it's not, there's only one move that you have to launch forward. So that those four or five feet, if you still have, that would be great. Mm. Okay. So like I said before, the 10 first stations, uh, it's one round, so we don't go back there. And then we modified it into that more heat, more um, extreme, let's say, uh, more physical part at the end. So it's a little bit different. So this first 10, uh, the full round is 45 seconds plus 15 break. Uh, the ones that were here two days ago know pretty much what's going on. And the others, just take a look what I'm doing. And, uh, and like I said, we are going for medium pace. But if you feel like, hey, I want to push today, I got the energy, then you go, man, you go, <laughs> you go crazy. Okay, so first 40, 45 seconds, it's going to be a plank, straight arm plank, and we're going to do the letter. So we start with the, with the letter T, so arm goes out, other side, that's T, then you go Y, and then you go I, and then you go back to T. Okay, so take a plank position, please. Keep your hands with this plank, this, this model, this modification. Keep your hands close to one another. Okay, let's go. So wide is a T, both sides, straight forward. Sorry, I first, it's a bit wider, and then straight forward, <sighs> keeping the core tight, and T. Ideally, the whole body stays nice and steady with all of these letters. T point, T and Y and I. So you hold every position one or two seconds. We got five seconds to go. Okay. Go on your back. And so we're going to do the elbow to knee alternation. Uh, if that feels heavy, only cycle with your legs or go a little pump with your legs. Otherwise, you go knee elbow alternation. Go. Try to get your shoulder blades off the ground. Fifteen seconds. Starts to burn. If you can do the full movement, modify it, but don't stop. Keep your legs in the air. Keep your back flat. Ooh, and time. Okay. Back on your feet. Everybody, time for the deep squat jumps. And what is deep? So ideally, we go down, if possible, like this. So you have your palms on the ground. If you cannot, you are higher. Okay? Everybody goes as low as possible. Let's go. 45 seconds, deep squats. So ideally, it's really the glutes and the legs are working so hard and it's lower modification. So to, so to keep your upper body nice and straight. Your gaze front. Ten seconds to go. Uh, 
and time. Okay, we go back on the ground for elbow plank. So you might want to use a towel for the elbows. And it's a low leg raise. So you go 10 pumps each leg and your feet comes only an inch or two off the ground. So lower the better, okay? So go to elbow plank. Ready? Pump 10 times. Two, three, five, six, eight, nine. Switch. And if, you, if you're getting too tired with pump, switch. Then just hold the plank. So try to hold it very hover just a little bit above above the ground 15 seconds to go there you go switch there. really work on the legs hard here last switch four five two and time good okay come up for the lateral jump aka skating jump and here Try to keep your upper body as low as you can. So now we were doing squats like this. Now I want you to go here. So you keep a lot of weight on the legs, very heavy. Low, like a strong angle in the legs. And then when jumped, if possible, try to touch the foot on both sides or ankle. Okay, ready? Go. Sideways. Jump. Lateral. And... When one arm is going down, I like to swing the other one out for balance. This is what you see the speed skaters do when they go on the straight part. Using those arms effectively. And time. Good job. Okay. Next one is a low push up. Sorry. Well, low is always low. I meant to say slow. And we're going to keep our knees on the ground. So you can put the towel or mat back there. Knees on the ground. And get into a push up position where you're, you're leaning strongly forward. Okay. So you're here. And Keep your hands and elbows close to the body. Core tight and feet up and then you go slowly. And try to get your nose hit the ground or well, perhaps better just close to it. When you come up, keep your core tight. Actually keep your core tight at all times because it really helps you to stay in form. So here, it's about the purity of the movement. It's not about the speed here. Go slow, come up slow. Go down, come up. The lower you go, you will feel it's getting heavier. If it gets too heavy, then go less deep. It's an easy way to modify it again. Elbows close to the body. And time. Good job. Okay. We're going to go slow, deep squat. And so <laughs> we already did this, this deep squat. But now we're going to do follow my lead in, in the, the, the pace. So everybody ready in the squat position? Okay. We're going to go down. Lower, 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 and slowly up. And down. And up. Hold it there, hold it. Down. And up. Hold, and down. 
and up. So we don't go up all the way straight. Keep attention in the muscles. Up and down. One more time. Up. Okay, let's hold it here. Like going to the toilet. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And come up slowly. Ooh, okay. Good. Okay. Next one is a forward lunge, long lunge jump. So it's not a step, it's really a jump. And if possible, obviously, otherwise it is a jab step. And try to bring your opposite hand on the front of the foot or on the foot when you do the lunge. You come back, shuffle, same on the other side. Okay, let's go, ready, and go. So the further you can go with your hand, let's say from your ankle to your foot, or from your foot to a couple of inches in front of your toes, or even a, a foot in front of your uh, own foot, that tells you the current reach you have. So if you're not going far, some, there's some stiffness in the body, and that doesn't allow you to always get to those low balls. So this is a good way to make the body stronger, but also work on the range of motion. One, two, one, two. Okay, a little bit faster pace, guys. Come on, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. And last one, good. All right, next one, knee raise, AKA knees up. So 45 seconds, ready and go. Use your arms to give yourself more rhythm. Come on, guys. I'm not seeing your knees. I want to see everybody's knees here. <laughs> Keep going. Let me check. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right, come on. Show me those knees. Lift them up. Show me those knees. Lift them up. Come on. Higher. And time. Good. Okay. Last one of the 10, uh, deep squat jump. Hey, hey, we know that one. So now the idea is obviously to go faster. But remember, when you go down, as slow as you can. When you go up, as high as you can. Okay, ready, go. Touch the ground. Come on, guys, keep going. You look good. We have to look good. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you deserve a 57 second break. So get some water, get ready for some heat. So once again, we have two tough rounds to come. Good news, they are short. They are four, four minute rounds. Less good news. There is no break in between. It's four minutes, first one, perhaps two. It's, it's okay. <laughs> and then it starts to become unpleasant. 
and we have to get through that unpleasant feeling and period so like i said before you need a break please have a break or go slow do the same exercise to slow the pace ideally you pace yourself the way that you're bloody exhausted after four minutes that's one round uh but you finished the round so you're able to to uh acknowledge your strength your your stamina how much can you take it's not much worth if you go really fast for one minute but then you're done because you will not win that game so we need to pace ourselves to push but only die after four minutes okay so the moves are the reptile that's the knee elbow version in the plank then we have the combination of two lunges so right foot left foot then we have the toe jump push-up so it's a burpee so it's a combination of those four and then we have the knees up and then we have the deep squat hmm. so first 60 seconds we go to a plank reptile so knee to elbow and we have five seconds before this fun starts so get into plank find a good balance Breathe in and go. Knee back, knee back, knee back. Keep your core tight. So work with the whole body here. The legs are really working hard, although you might not feel it, but it's your glued. The glutes are still holding your body, your core, your plank straight. So you need those quads and you need those uh, glutes to work on that. Okay, we got 15 seconds to go. Come on, guys. Oh, we can do this all night. Ooh, come up. Okay, lunge left, lunge right, toe jump, push up. Lunge, lunge, toe jump, push up. Lunge, lunge, toe jump, push up. Ooh, toe jump. Ooh. Up and down. Reach out, reach out, up and down. Lunge, lunge, jump, and push up. Almost there, guys. Five seconds. Last ones. One, two, jump and push up. Good. All right. Knees up. Whew. Let's go. Unfortunately, you have to hear me breathing fast. Lift it, lift it. Come on, guys. Go. Higher, higher. I'm looking at you. Come on. I'm not telling who, I'm looking at everybody equally. Oh, we need to push it together. Come on. Last five, starting now. One, two, higher, three, four. One minute, deep squat. Go. This will eat the legs nicely. Come on, guys. 
Get your toes, get your feet off the ground with the jump. Almost there. 20 seconds from now. Burning, burning, come on. 10 seconds. Woo. Come on. Woo. Woo. And five. Ah. Why these seconds are so long? Time. Oh, gosh. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, good news. Coming minute, you don't have to do any physical exercise except breathe and drink water. Bad news, you have one more round to go. Good job. I'm in a good company here. Thank you. It hits your lungs and your legs quite nicely together. <laughs> okay, guys, don't go too far. I mean, look at it this way. Four minutes and it's gone, it's done. And we will benefit, I'm sure. We will all benefit in many ways. Physical strength, mental strength, camaraderie. I didn't pronounce that well. Camaraderie, that's better. So, because we're doing it together as a team, we're sweating together for the good cause. <laughs> yes, okay. Damn, that was 90 second break. That's too long. Guys, ready? Reptile. Blank. Ready? Knees to elbows. Round finale. Let's go. And switch. Doing fine. Come on, keep going. Looking good. Actually, I'm not seeing anybody. People are so low. Yeah. Join us. Kelly needs to join us, right guys? Ah. Okay, time, next one. Two lunges forward. Toe jump and a push up. Ready? Go. Lunge. Lunge. Toe jump. And push up. And toes. Push up. Come on, guys. Ooh. We can do this. This is the time that we have to stay mentally strong. Ooh. We need it, we want it, we get it. Come on. Ooh. Jump, jump. Ooh. Come on, guys. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Almost there. Last one, jump, ah. Oof. and Woo. knees up, go, no break. Okay, last bit, bit higher. Come on. 
You can go a little bit higher. I can go higher, you can go higher. Come on. Woo. Yeah, extra high. Extra, extra, extra. Come on, higher. Come on. Lift it. Lift it. Uh, uh. Okay, last one. Deep squat. Come on. Woo. We can make it. Everybody's still moving. We got 30 seconds. Whew. What's that? That's nothing. Although I might feel a little uncomfortable. Oh. Oh. Come on, guys. 15. We're almost there. I can see the light. Ah. Ooh. 10. Ah. Five. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Woo. Good job, man.